And welcome to Enter VR, the podcast where we talk about everything virtual reality. I am your host, Chris Miranda, and today is a special show. It's the New Year's show, uh, and it's going to be a show about the year that we've had uh, and the year that's coming next, and about reflection and speculation and a whole sorts of fun stuff. So today uh, is a very special show because I have two very awesome guests. Uh, coming up first, I have uh, Carl Krantz, the creator of the virtual reality Silicon Valley virtual... Did I just... What just happened? <laughs> you get it. Keep at it. <laughs> Carl Krantz, the creator of the virtual reality Sil- the Silicon Valley virtual reality meetup. A man, a legend. Thank you so much for coming along, Carl. Oh, thanks for having me. This is uh, exciting. Very, yes, very much indeed. Thank you for being here. And uh, without further ado, I'm just going to say it. Cymatic Bruce, Shaken Not Stirred, International Men in Mystery, thank you for joining me today, sir. Oh, my absolute pleasure. It's great to be on again. Again, thank you so much. So let's get this thing going. Um, the new year, it's coming along. We just had a crazy 2013 for virtual reality. Um, and just very quickly, what I want to start off with is just... Uh, we're gonna maybe run through the months that we've had and see if what was the most important story of the month. So, for example, January 2013, what was the most important thing that happened, and what were you guys up to at that point? Um, because we're 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 painting a we're we're starting a, yeah. What I'm trying to say is we're forming a story here um, of what happened this whole year. And so, do you guys have any news? Anything that happened January thir- 2013 that that pops to mind? I'm going to have no idea what happened in what month, but <laughs> a lot of things happened this year. It's been really... That's oh awesome. Oh, my God. January 2013, uh, I think I was probably in the thick of learning UDK mm-hmm. at that point. Um, yeah, because it was, uh, what was... What was going on? It was uh, like, uh, you know, the Kickstarter had already happened mm-hmm. and was successful mm-hmm. at that point. And it was uh, like everyone was all excited. There was mm-hmm. mad speculation going on about what was going to happen. Everyone was like, when are the units coming? Oh, my God. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I think I was uh, like uh, learning some, some UDK, investigating whether I was going to use Unity or UDK. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's where my head was at, I think, at that point. Cool. Yeah, during January, January was a weird, uh, it was an interesting month at least, because I, there was n- there was no way to tell what was going to happen, I think. Um, I was just really excited to keep up with the Rift, because February comes along, and February was a month that, I don't remember if there was much news. Do you remember anything that happened in February, Carl or, or Bruce? No. Now you better take this, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I'm thinking back. I don't remember a whole lot going on in February. Yeah, it was uh, it was around my birthday time, and I was happy as hell. I was like, "Yeah, virtual reality, yeah." And uh, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I don't remember anything specific as far as uh, as far as that time of year. I know I was kind of it was it was a time when I had my head down and was mm-hmm. kind of like. Uh, doing this and doing that as far as the trying to build up some skills and prepare. Um, so that's mostly what I was doing about that time. Yeah. So, so the year starting to pick up starting March, I think things starting to picking up, starting, started to pick up because I remember the first dev kit start shipping out. I, I think that was in, in March. Am I, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so. It was like a yeah. post on Reddit and the guy was like, I got it. And that was all. That was all the post was, and it was a picture of the box. Yep. And it was like, oh my god. Um, yeah, I think they started so, uh, shipping right during GDC because I was at GDC, and I think that's in March. And uh, I think yeah. people were trying to figure out if they were arriving while people were at GDC. People were thinking of leaving early so they could go home and get their rift. And, and so, what yeah. was the <laughs> en- environment back at GDC, Carl? Like during during March, what was the at least the like the the mentality? Yeah or the general mentality for people back then were they thinking like this is this is it or or were or people still skeptical back then uh no by gdc it was definitely a madhouse i mean i, I was at gdc and um they were demoing the rift there and i arrived uh, at the expo you know early the, the first or second morning the expo opened um and i wanted to uh, yeah, I guess it was the second day because the first day uh, the lines were very long, you know, like two hour lines to wait to try it. And mm-hmm. the second day I arrived like over an hour early to 
to be the first at the door and I was not the first. <laughs> there was already a group of people there waiting. And like by the time it opened, there was like a hundred people all, and it was just a stampede, like people running full on like across the hall when the expo doors opened to try to get first in line. And I was there right from the beginning and I still had to wait an hour and a half wow. that day. <laughs> wow. So people yeah. were excited. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of excitement already. Definitely. I was not able to attend GDC, but I was in the area at the time and I attended the GDC, like uh, the backer party mm -hmm. um, that they uh, Oculus held. It was uh, at this random bar that they rented out the upstairs of um, and uh, quite a few people showed up. It was it was packed and people were excited. Like it was definitely a lot of palpable enthusiasm in the air. And mm -hmm. uh yeah, it was like people were talking about their ideas, and I uh, met quite a few of the Oculus staff as well. I uh, met Palmer there, and I uh, talked to him for a little bit, and um, I uh, met the, uh, gosh, I can never remember his name, the guy that's in charge of software over there. He's, he's amazingly brilliant, the software engineer. Ooh, um, Peter, and, uh, Peter, really cool. yeah, Peter something. I, I'm sorry, Peter. Peter. Harris. There you go. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so I was, that was amazing, and I uh, talked to uh, Cyber Reality Andreas, uh, who was uh, who was awesome, really really That's great guy sad. to talk to as well. So, um, and then there was just various people there from all over that were just talking about the possibilities of VR and how excited they were. So, uh, it's definitely some uh, some some great enthusiasm and excitement that was that was uh, that was boiling over at that time. Very awesome. So that so that was March, and now April. In in April, I think there's 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 this momentum starting to pick up because in April. What, what do you remember, Carl, happening? Uh, the, well, that's really when um, you know people started getting their dev kits and started actual posting experiences, and that's yep. really when the demos started flowing. I mean, I guess it was just a few in the beginning, but that's that's when it all really started because that's when the technology actually got into people's hands. Mm -hmm. That's when Bruce started posting his videos, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah, that's yeah. big. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, I started uh, doing videos in uh, in late March after after that GDC, and uh, but my videos were, you know, kind of just me fooling around in UDK and uh, and like kind of talking about VR, and it was kind of just developers, and it was like a few hundred hits, and people were like, yeah, it's cool, man, seems like a cool concept, and then uh, yeah, I got my my dev kit in April, and after that, everything just kind of went crazy, like uh, it. You know, community was just starving for information, and there was just all these experiences that were coming out, and yep. people were trying stuff. So, a super exciting time, and really amazing and busy for me. There was all these things that were happening. I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah it was really, really awesome, really awesome to see uh, so much activity, like tangible activity, not just speculation, but being able to try things and see yep. people try things. A lot, uh, lot of excitement. So for you, Bruce, did you knew right away that you like when you had the rift? Did you knew beforehand that you had the, the before you had the rift that you wanted to do a YouTube channel or or, or video uh sort of channel, or did you sort of have the light bulb moment when you when you first got your hands on the rift? What was it? When when was that? Yeah, my my intention was uh, you know I was going to kind of take this as a development jump off. You know, I'd, I'd always been. You know, interested in game development and kind of done things on the side, but it was just a bunch of projects that never really came to fruition. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, this time I'm definitely going to go through with something. It's going to be awesome, and I'm going to keep this journal and keep myself accountable to kind of stay with it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I started this video journal, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to have this video journal and this blog, and it's going to be around uh, my progress and experiences in VR development. Um, and... Uh, yeah, once I posted my first impression videos, that all kind of got scrapped. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of uh, bent to the community's will, and uh, you know, everyone was like, oh, "We need more information and more videos and stuff." So yeah. uh, everything kind of changed. But yeah, the intention was a little bit different. I didn't set out to be like a let's play type of guy or anything like that. It was, uh, it was mo mostly a personal type thing. For sure. And so very cool. So so May comes along, and this is this is where uh, you and Carl and I all converge because this is where Silicon Valley Virtual Reality Meetup uh, is born uh, in May. And how and for you, Carl, like when did you have that moment where uh, I'm going to do a meetup? Uh, yeah, I guess that goes back to probably February. 
Um, wow. Maybe it was around January or February that uh, Bruce and I first started talking. Uh, Bruce had a Bruce, you had a news group you posted uh, for Rift developers before before the Rift shipped. And yeah. I think that's how I found you. And there was like six people in that news group or something. And, yeah, it was um, real small. But actually, some of those guys yeah. are still in the meetup. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, that's how we started talking. But um, and the seeds for the meetup were kind of planted back then. Wow. Yeah, um, I remember. And then, yeah, it was May sixteenth was, was the very first SVBR at the Computer History Museum, just upstairs from the very first um, HMD, Ivan Sutherland's uh, Sword of Damocles. Wow. Now, Carl, you had to had planned that. That was on purpose. You wanted to have that computer his you wanted to have it at the computer history museum because you knew yourself that this is this is history being born. Or or, or was there like eh, it's just a convenient place to have it. What what was No, no, it was very intentional and very very much from the beginning, um in and when Bruce and I spoke we we talked about how the, the homebrew computer club was kind of an inspiration for for this and you know, we we really felt from the beginning that this this is history and this is like the birth of something very important mm -hmm. and um and yeah i was very aware that the uh that ivan sutherland's hmd was at the computer history museum and you know i love that place and i had just recently gone there so i thought it was the perfect place if we could do it there and and perfect it was because yeah it was it was it was a perfect yeah i think you had the perfect backdrop to something so cool coming up. So so May passes by and June comes along and June we have E3, right? And and so for me I remember watching E3 and everywhere I looked I remember being somewhat f frustrated, disappointed because I couldn't get enough Rift information or I could I couldn't see enough Oculus you know, I, I was really scanning every time I saw like a video pan of E3 I would look for the Oculus booth because I, I just couldn't get enough uh you know information on Oculus and so what were you guys up to back in June or what do you remember? Well uh, I'd like to back it up just a little bit mm -hmm. because so many things happened in May oh uh, yeah like in May that's when we found out like TF2 and Half-Life 2 working in the Rift oh. um, with all that Valve stuff so that was that was pretty major um, and then EVR I think about that time that's where it landed um, it was a little before E3 I think when that uh, gave a lot of legitimacy for a lot of people when mm -hmm. you know people were lining up repeatedly at the whatever the uh ccp like eve conference that they had yeah um and you know people were playing evr uh which is called valkyrie now i guess but uh i mean they were playing like four or five six times in a row waiting an hour and a half each time um and uh i think for a lot of people that's like that was kind of a wake up call. Like, whoa, this is this is legit. This is not some kind of gimmick. I, I think that was probably pretty instrumental in converting a lot of people as far as their enthusiasm and excitement level and curiosity. Um, you know, that that was not just uh, kind of one of fad fly by night type thing. Um, people just came out of that Eve conference so excited, um, and there was all this like Valve information, which was very very exciting, and it was uh, very cool and. Uh, yeah, and after all that, it's like E3, and it's like, oh, well, what can possibly top that? Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah. What do you think, Carl? Yeah, through, um, I, I guess at that time, I was just really, uh, yeah, watching Bruce's videos and, and online, really just getting into the research and trying to figure out what I wanted to do in this space, because, you know, I'm, I'm still not sure. I just know it's an important space I want to be involved in, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to do everything I can. <laughs> yeah, I but, um, but, yeah, I guess in that time, I was just pretty heavy into the research side of it, figuring out, you know, um, what... You know, where this stuff's going to go, the best way to set everything up. You know, I was in the preparing my computer for my Rift mode, which I guess a lot of people have gone through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So going back to what you mentioned earlier, Bruce, I think people, or I, I don't know who does, but I, I think no one should underestimate the amount of legitimacy uh, that Valve brought to the table by, by you know, being so open with, with Oculus. Um, 
it, it, it truly has been one of those things that I think that it's probably been, you know, I, I think this show we're going to be talking a lot about the $75 million and John Carmack, but Valve jumping on board along and being so uh, hand in hand with Oculus, I think has been just just as extremely important as everything else that's had, that has happened. Um, and, and, and it's somewhat overlooked, I think, just because it's now, you know, this, this thing is just set up. And I can't wait for January when they have this conference or meeting or convention where oculus is heading up to seattle i think and they're they're being uh they're gonna have this steam event uh do you guys you know what i'm talking about right that one uh yeah steam dev days there you go days yeah so yeah i'm I'm looking very much forward to what oculus and valve has has in store I, i would love to get in there i wish it was i wish steam i wish valve was a little more open about their dev days you know i think a lot of the most interesting stuff happening in vr is not happening through the big um traditional game companies but you know their their invitation system for steam dev days is kind of set up to favor those companies so mm. unfortunately a lot of the right people are not going to get in there i think and see you yeah. know the new whatever new technology they're showing yeah you know? Well, well, yeah, we'll see what the future brings. So July comes along, and uh, this is when we find out that, that John Carmack comes comes from Armadillo and id Software to start working with Oculus for a little bit. I, I think that was that month, right? I think, if I'm not mm-hmm, mistaken. I believe so. Okay. Um, give or take month or July, uh, July August. Uh, but that was huge news. I mean, that was that was hitting up the Twitters everywhere, and I remember people were saying, um, whoa, this is big. This is going to be big. Like, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember thinking, "Wow, this is this is happening." Yeah, I think that actually convinced a lot of the more conservative traditional gamers because they pay attention to what Carmack does, mm-hmm. and I think that was, uh, you know, just such a stamp of approval right there. You know, legitimacy. People said, "Oh, actually, there must be something to this." Yeah, absolutely. And the build up to that. I mean, just just before that, they uh, unveiled their HD unit. Uh, at E3, and they got like that 16 mil of funding around that same time, um, like that first round of funding, and then John Carmack comes on board. So that was kind of like a, you know, that's that's definitely a big deal, and um, you know, went from kind of hokey startup, cool indie thing to this is legitimate business. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, definitely. I mean, the word of Carmack is very very influential i mean i i think that's one of the reasons i got excited about the rift in the first place i mean i was excited on the mtbs forums going back and was like oh this is really cool that this guy is working on this stuff um but you know once carmack is not a guy that exaggerates in any way yeah. so it's not like a i mean when when a guy like that that's very matter of fact and very detail oriented tells you like yes this is good um then you you gotta gotta listen yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. It was very exciting stuff. Yeah. And, and listen, we did, I think, uh, I, I think not only did he, was he able to move fan bases, but he was also able to move developers. Developers were compelled to start working or contemplating the rift just because of the, you know, the clout that Carmack has. And thanks for bringing up the HD rift, because that's, again, that's something else that people kept, uh, you know, it, it wasn't good enough to just have a dev kit one it, you know for oculus to come out with that hd you know hd panel rift kit rift kit i think it was a it was a good sign that they were working hard at something you know and and and, and they show it off at a3 i don't think people were expecting that either and neither were reporters i remember reading articles from every everyone from wired to uh, verge and everyone putting on the hd kit and they were saying like this is you know, this is miles above the the dev kit one, and and just I, I was feeling so excited. I mean, yeah, it's 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 crazy. This is awesome. Like, oh yeah, I I, I it was definitely very very exciting, very cool to yeah. to see. And it's like, you know, Eve VR came out like from IGN and several other publications. I think is like the best of E3, mm-hmm. like best experience or most innovative game and all this stuff. So I was also reassuring to see Oculus and, and VR kind of become the darling of the gaming press mm-hmm. um, in, in that situation, uh, which was uh, really, really neat to, uh, to check out and, and, uh, and see. Yeah, for sure. So, so August comes along, August, uh, and I, again, I don't remember what was the, what was the biggest story in August? 
uh yeah i think people were i think it was more john carmack it was a lot of john carmack happening in august uh unless you remember anything that that particularly stands out carl or, or bruce uh the the vr jam was announced you're I think, the man you on. are on top uh, yeah, of this right. thing there you go and Bruce. uh that went down and uh yeah oculus was hiring people and uh vr jam action uh was uh was popping off which was i mean freaking amazing yeah uh, and you know, unfortunately that was the time when i was swamped with work um but uh yeah it was i still gave it my best effort <laughs> and put tried to put something in uh but it was uh yeah it was uh, just a deluge you know like so many applications that people just put out there and finished and um and then after that all that oculus share beta shows its face which is pretty cool so um we really start to see the start of the oculus software arm uh or publishing arm or whatever it's going to be kind mm -hmm. of show its head mm -hmm. um which was uh kind of interesting so so many demos so many experiences out there to to check out and so many ideas being thrown around uh were super interesting and so carl what do you think of that approach doing a vr jam to encourage uh, people to develop software for virtual reality do you think do you think that was the right approach for oculus at the time Oh yeah, it was a huge boom for them. I mean, all the all the amazing applications that were kind of you know kickstarted through that, you know, mm -hmm. or given that boost by having a deadline. I mean, you know, developers need deadlines or things just drag on forever. And that, yeah, what did they get? Two hundred and something applications out of the VR jam, mm -hmm. and a lot of those are still going now. I mean, every day we're seeing updates to those applications. Exactly, so that, was, that was great. And and I was yeah. I, I saw that was. In August, I saw the uh, HD prototype for the first time at Unite, and they were demoing VR Jam ap applications right there. And that was just a, a, you know like a maybe a week after the deadline, or maybe even a few days. And they were they were already showing those off as their you know showcase applications, which I think is great. <laughs> I think I think this uh, you know just not to get too off track, but I think that. Uh, the VR jam happening in 2013 and DARPA was holding a competition where there were a, a robotics competition like the robotics Olympics in Florida and you know you had teams from all over America come down and, and building robots that would um, that would that could you know work around obstacles and do different tasks I, I you know looking at those two things these two technologies virtual reality and robotics and you're seeing that at the dawn of the 21st century, we are, you know, we're putting effort into these sorts of things. For me, uh, the thing that would be awesome is imagine if virtual reality had the budget that DARPA has. Holy moly, we'd be inside the Oasis by now. <laughs> well, that's, it's weird, but it, it's, it's had the kind of budget that DARPA has had for a long time and still wasn't good. <laughs> like, oh, true. Like a lot of, a yeah, lot that's, of that's places... A <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember me and Carl. We went to the Stanford lab, and uh, and you know we played on this, uh, you know, had this experience with this. I don't know, it was like a forty-five or fifty thousand dollar headset from Vuzix or something like that. Uh -huh. It's like and, a two hundred thousand uh, dollar tracking system. Oh my god! Yeah, it was huge. And uh, we 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 left there, and we're like, "Thank you for the experience." And we turned and looked at each other, and we're like. The rift is so much better than that. <laughs> yeah, it really was, and that's like top, top of the line stuff. I mean, wow. I mean, huge, huge, expensive equipment, and uh, you know, it's um, it you know, it's one of those things where it was, it's a different, it's a different marketplace. I mean, you're making things for the government; they want something that exact specifications, and there's no incentive to go above and beyond that or anything like that. I mean, you meet those specifications, and you get a whole big chunk of money. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. I think in the case of VR, having a lot of money behind it hurt it for a long time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it it well, held it back. It's only when it got cheap enough for people who are just plain passionate about it and want to do it as a hobby and for fun. That's when it you know, really starts to take off. Now. Th that's exactly the point because I think th there was this, all this money going around to, to VR, but I don't think it was going to the right people, which is the fans, uh -huh. the, the people who are really, really into this. I think – yeah, if if you build a, a a product, a technology uh, from the fan base, you you have something solid. And I think this is what's happening in virtual reality. We are the fans are 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 you know are just as big a shareholder in Oculus. I feel like as 
you know, Anderson Horowitz. I, I you know, um, and, and, you know, that's a crazy yeah. thought to think, but I think, yeah, yeah no, really, true. this is, this is truly a technology that is pushed from the bottom up. I mean, you know, VR came out of the forums on the internet of hobbyists and tinkerers and, you know, it's been around for a long time, but it, it wasn't really going anywhere until it was pushed from the bottom up, not from the top down. The top down approach didn't work for VR. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been trying that for decades and it didn't work. So it's this kind yeah. of democratization of VR that, that is really carrying it forward. Yeah. And now, Absolutely. yeah. And so now that, so, you know, sticking, uh, sticking a little bit longer with robotics, like what do you, when do you think we will see the oh. next Palmer Lucky of robotics or the next, you know, John Carmack of robotics come out with a all in one virtual, no, not virtual reality robot, but like a, a robot that, you know, will be, you know, are we, are you, I think we're years away from that, but I think it's, it's going to happen eventually. We'll, well, we'll, that, uh, that marriage is already happening, man. Uh, NASA. <laughs> ah, yes. So what NASA is, uh, is doing there, uh, talking about using, you know, virtual reality, uh, in, in conjunction with like the connect to, um, and to have remote robot controls. Um, <clears throat> so basically instead of having a manned mission to Mars, you send a robot up there, uh, that's able to be controlled by, uh, by a human, or even if you have humans in a spaceship orbiting and mm -hmm. you can send robots down on the surface of wherever, uh, and have a human control that robot from the, uh, from a, you know, from the orbiting ship or things like that. Yeah. Um, so they're, they have already kind of talked about that and they're, um, you know, they're already involved in mar marrying virtual reality, um, and, uh, and kind of human sensor technology to, uh, to robotics, mm -hmm. uh, which is super, super exciting, uh, and a, a wonderful way to explore too. Like, you know, imagine if anyone could tap into that robot on Mars and kind of take a look around. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a really, really profound experience uh, to have that amazing amount of access across the board uh, for for anybody. Yeah, I it, you know, and you look at uh, I you know, I, I you speak of NASA, and I and I just got rem I just reminded myself that Google bought Boston Dynamics. And, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, that's terrifying. <laughs> well, oh, well God, here's the thing. The most terrifying I have a, robotics. I have an idea to Lord. pitch to Google. I want to pitch them the following thing: Google, hey, why don't you take these robots? Let's let's give give me an Oculus Rift, and I will control the robot as I help you or I help humanity clean up Fukushima, because this is what robots and virtual reality, I think, is it's the purpose to help us humans and, and go places where we can't go like space, just what you mentioned, uh, Bruce, but, yeah. but also clean up this, this nuclear disaster, because I was just reading, uh, I think an, an article and I, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I, I saw that the Japanese government is trying to get homeless people to go clean up, uh, Fukushima. So Japan, please don't send homeless people, just send robots. We, we, ha we, we, we're getting there. We're going to get there. We're going to send Oculus Rift enabled robots to help you clean up uh, Fukushima um, but yeah it's that's this is where it, it does a bit get a bit scary Carl because Google Boston Dynamics people say Skynet like immediately like <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> Yeah. Are you more worried or hopeful? Are you guys more worried or hopeful about this this merge that is that is happening? I mean, it's not just Boston Dynamics. Eight eight other robot companies. What will, what will happen? Yeah, it's it's um it's kind of an interesting you know development because for, for the longest time it's been oh you know Google is like the perfect company and and they're the, just the darling of everyone and they could do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Um. But, you know, people are starting to find out that Google is just like any other company that's out there. Um, and they attract a higher pedigree of people, yes, and they have some interesting and uh, leadership going on, but it's still a corporation, and they, uh, they're they still out to make profit um, and, uh, and, and do what they do, and, you know... Hey, I mean, some of the things that Google has done, like what they, how they've handled YouTube, um, which is kind of weird, and how they've handled privacy issues, and mm -hmm. um, you know, just it's just some stuff where it's like they they're a company with a whole lot of power, and then they're they're going to be pretty much probably at this point in charge of the technology that is in self-driving cars. So 
Uh, they're in the lead on it. They have the stuff that works right now. Yeah. Um, and I seriously doubt that, you know, Chrysler, GM, or Ford, or whoever is going to try to do this from the ground up. I, I'm thinking they're going to try to, you know, license Google's technology uh, for, you know, those services. And I don't know, it's, just, it's a lot of control for one company to have. Uh, and I, I think no matter how awesome or great the company seems to be, I think it's just to, to have that much power in one company's hands is a kind of a frightening prospect, I think. One, one day, five years from now, we're going to look back at this same set, like phrase, uh, paragraph that you just mentioned, uh, Bruce, and we're going to juxtapose it with Oculus. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I think Bruce has a good point, though. It's, yeah. it's the exclusive access to some technology that is really – really hard to replicate and you know it's it's just such a barrier of entry for anyone else so you know boston dynamics like obviously they have a massive lead on some of this robotics technology and and for google to acquire them and to have exclusive access to the best self-driving car technology and you know all of these things and all of the data behind search it is a lot of it's a tremendous amount of power for mm -hmm. one company to have and that's dangerous. And yeah. you know, I'm you know, as, as I've spoken about before, I'm I'm concerned about that happening happening with VR, and I'm glad it's not happening that way, and I'm glad it is such a bottoms up um, technology right now, or you know, being driven from the bottom up. And I, I hope it stays that way. Yeah, and when you know when you guys say Google is is it's just too much power to have for one for one company, I think of J.J. Abr Abrams because he's uh, not only working on Star Trek but also Star Wars. And for me, I'm thinking like, whoa, this is too much power for one man to have. Like, this is <laughs> with both the Lord of the Geeks. Yes, <laughs> he has arrived. He's doing His both. Is... Like, I didn't know that could be possible. It's crazy. Yeah. If him and Joss Whedon decided to join forces, yeah. uh, they could uh, they could mobilize an entire country's worth of nerd. <laughs> as long as he My... stays away from Firefly, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So so September comes around and September uh yeah I, I, again my my memory fails me right now but do you guys remember what was happening in September do you can recollect September Oculus Jam comes to a close yep. uh Gamescom was around that time I yep. think or something or was it October yep. um that was just uh, Oculus was on the road man I think there was just a lot of uh a lot of uh, conferences at that time. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that was one of the SVVRs, I think, where we didn't have a lot of uh, our attendance was like the lowest because everyone was either going to a conference or just came from a conference mm -hmm. or something. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty wild. And then um, what sort of thing that happened in September, kind of looking around, uh, the latency tester pre-order started uh, and they kind of announced that, that uh, device yeah. at oculus uh so that was that was pretty cool so yeah it was i think that was a month where i was watching a lot of videos of uh what was going on at all the conferences the hd unit being shown off to people and uh and all that good stuff i think was was going on i think I was think it the stem yes stem launched in september as well that was exactly yeah, that's say right that. yeah, yeah so so now you have so now you have the oculus and now you have a potential peripheral device to to have input with it so so that's so so that's really good that's coming along and then october comes along and what was uh again october something i'm so set on november i've been so set on november but do you guys remember <laughs> october 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 i was pretty heads down with uh the vr launchpad project so oh, yeah. i think that's when i launched that so VR, yeah. For me, I didn't look up once in October. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So I mean, October was the first time we had some word about the uh, the Android. I think that was a September October about the kind of Android direction that Oculus was talking about when yes. you know, Carmack was like, "Hey, you know, we're talking about doing Android development," and there was a lot of speculation on that. Like, is it you know trying to make the Oculus kind of a thing that you? that you have that's just portable. Maybe you slip your phone into it and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Lots of Kickstarter stuff going on around that time, of course, too. All kinds of yeah. interesting accessories that were that were out there. So um, not a whole lot from Oculus there, but a, a whole bunch from the community kind of 
products and and all kinds of interesting things being announced and speculated on. And and so that's a smart thing uh, to for for Oculus to start doing uh, Android. That means they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing because I think that. Uh, Android is the perfect platform for the casual user. Um, if you're going to create, you know, hardcore, you know, massive, you know, masterpieces of, of game that, that cost millions of dollars, I think PC and, and yeah, desktop uh, platforms are, are great for that because of the horsepower. But for the casual experience and who knows what someone will create for Android, I, I think, you know, that, that, that market, that sort of... Uh, that sort of uh, customer base has yet to be tapped, and if anything, that's going to be the 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 killer app because someone's going to come in and create a video launcher inside Android, and you're going to be able to use video launchers inside VR to to I don't know convert YouTube videos or convert your own movies. Um, yeah, like sort of like VR cinema style. I think that would be you know sort of the experiences that would be really good for for Android, at least off the top of my head. Oh. Yeah, um, I actually got one that was sent to me by Sam Getzfart. Um, he has one called Go Show, something that he's working on, and oh. uh, it's that exact thing. It's like you can uh, get a Jarovis dive or some other similar, you know, whatever kind of uh, custom head mount that you have. You slip your phone into it, and uh, you're able to check out a movie in 3D and look around this, this you know, 3D movie theater. Um, and, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. I would love to have that like on a long train ride or a long airplane ride or something like that, yeah. just to kind of kick back and, uh, you know, put that on my face and watch a movie and, uh, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, the, do you, I, I think, uh, cause I have a doer of his dive. Uh, thank you, Stefan Wilker. And, uh, he, uh, instead of using the go show unfortunately I haven't been able to get it working but but what I have been doing is I go on YouTube and I just search SBS 3d and it just gives me a whole library of side-by-side -side 3d videos that you can just enjoy off of YouTube so like at night when I'm uh yeah when I when I when I don't want to bother like my girlfriend sleeping next to me I just put on the Durovis dive and look up SBS 3d videos and it's awesome. Like I have 3D video experiences with my smartphone uh, on on my bed, chilling. It's really, yeah. You're right, Bruce. Train rides and plane rides will never be the same once this thing takes off. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna be awesome because people won't be like you know you know talking on their phones while you're on the plane, and it won't be. It'll be the, yeah. They'll be in their own bubbles. It'll be cool. They'll be shouting oh, yeah. at sports games instead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, oh my god, I don't believe now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, yes. you you know the future, man. You have your finger <laughs> on the future. Oh my god, that's what's going to be some some Packers fan on a plane with the Avogadro glyph <laughs> yelling at nothing. <laughs> 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 oh man so november rolls around and november is a big month it's it's a big month all around not just because of just for oculus but that this is when the consoles come out the 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 xbox one and the ps4 and yeah, yeah it's a big it's a big month november i think what do you what do you guys what can you guys recollect mm, november so much speculation i think around that was around the time when uh uh, was, I, I can never say his name right, Yoshida? The, uh, uh, Shuhei Yoshida. Shuhei Yoshida, yeah. He made, like, a, like a, some tweets about kind of alluding that Sony was going to do something in the yeah. VR space, and then uh, it was when, like, the patents or something, it was yeah. information about patents coming from Valve or coming from, uh, coming from Apple, coming from Sony. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like, oh, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's pretty interesting stuff indeed. Definitely. Um, with uh, with November. Yeah, because because I be, because here's the elephant in the room that no one is is really talking about. I feel like, and and this is again, it's it's gonna get worked out eventually. But patents, patents are are a thing that I I that I keep thinking about, like. Because people ask me this question, like, well, what about patents? And, and you know, uh, I worry about patent trolls and patent lawsuits. Um, 
what do you guys think is i mean right now i feel like we're living the best case scenario which is there the the conversation about patent is, isn't even in on the table but it's gonna be i think eventually it's just i just wonder what direction it's gonna take will it will, will oculus be prepared for it uh, i don't know I, th I think we're pretty lucky actually um in, in vr as a space because i think a lot of the originators in vr were very smart people who were very concerned about this. And I think they made sure that uh, most of the patents were not acquired. Uh, I know uh, Jaron Lanier, um, I, I think, held a lot of the patents around VR for a while. And he did that to prevent other companies from taking them and locking them up. And, um, yeah, I think there's there's some interesting stories there that need to be uncovered about the history of VR patents. Yeah, I'd like to research that a little bit more and find out what really happened. Um, I, I remember reading, I don't remember the details, but I remember reading how how the uh, patents were rescued from, uh, I want to say Sun at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I forget which company actually, but yeah, there's some interesting stories to be uncovered there. Definitely. But I think we're pretty lucky in that a lot of this stuff has been done for decades. So there's nothing fundamental in the Oculus um, that we've seen, you know, that in, in what they've shown publicly so far that could really be patented. Yeah. 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 I think it's kind of that same deal. I mean, there's these these companies are I mean, they're putting out these these patents, but I'm not really sure exactly what they're <laughs> what they're going after. I mean. Like Carl said, I mean, this stuff has been out for years and years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, that's going back to even you know the their stereoscopes. I mean, it's some of the same principles that are coming from there, um, mm -hmm. just using you know displays and moving pictures. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, and, and and Oculus has the advantage of having an actual product out there. Like yeah. uh, they've moved forty thousand units of a VR headset, which is the the biggest distribution of any VR headset in history, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think there's anything that that top that numbers wise even. So uh, they have the advantage if it comes down to a core thing like, uh, look, we have an actual product. It's not like the iPhone and the Galaxy or something where mm -hmm. it's two products that are out. It's like, yeah, these guys don't have a product at all. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like we we are on the market. We already have a product. We have this here, so. Uh, they might be able to use that to their advantage as well, but who knows with the legal system nowadays. But uh, you know. Yeah. So since the I don't, since I guess the conversation, I mean, it's just you know, it's just waiting and see what the future brings because I think you know, business is warfare, and you know, mo it's modern day warfare where where people instead of waging war with you know lances and swords, it's business suits and uh, lawsuits, and I think. Um, yeah, Oculus is, is is about to, you know, is if Oculus when it were an army, I would say uh, it is a it's the army of Hannibal about to storm Rome, and we and, and so we're like we're like a ragtag group of you know barbarians trying to take over Rome, and what's Riding gonna be the elephant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and so, and who who are we going up? Who is who is Oculus going up against? It's these behemoths, behemoths. I just can't pronounce English words anymore. Behemoths of companies that are Sony and and Microsoft. And who's to say? I mean, since Sony filed patents right now, who's to say that later in the future, you know, Sony's gonna send a a phalanx of uh law lawyers to you know attack our flanks. I don't know. Um, I wonder. If, I mean, the because knowing what we know from I, Apple and, and Samsung, they're they've been going at it in almost every country: Taiwan, Korea, Europe, Western Europe. They've been going at it, and and so it, it once the money starts rolling and once the money starts flowing into into Oculus's coffers, I can see I can see patent trolls coming out of the woodwork, and, and I can see you know the oh, bigger yeah. companies uh, preparing to launch a preemptive legal strike hey we have patents on this and then that and that that and this i don't know uh but you might be right again carl because you know because of jaron linear's uh, uh scholarly attitude towards vr i don't know hmm. yeah, I, hope so. I, I think <laughs> yeah i hope so I, I think a lot of those things uh you know i don't know how much we'll have to worry i mean you know you yes you have these huge companies but i mean they've 
they've sat on this technology for so long. I mean, theoretically, a, pro- a product like the Oculus could have been created as, as, as long as maybe four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and Sony had the supply chain to do it, and Samsung had the supply chain to do it, and uh, and and instead they kind of made a 3D movie viewer that was that was all right in the Sony HMZ, you mm-hmm. know, and that's and that's as far as they got with that market, you know, mm-hmm. and and so the the will uh, agency, I don't know, I mean, if, I don't know if it's there, and the expertise, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Oculus is, has a major brain drain right now on <laughs> on any science having to do with virtual reality. I mean, they've mm-hmm. got so many guys having to do with optics and uh, from psychology and then also the technical questions and the engineering. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they've got like the best of the best when it comes to that. And not only skill wise, but also attitude wise, like guys that yeah, really vision. want I mean, vision is real yeah. important in something like that. Absolutely. And that's where a company like yeah. Sony will fall down is because they just won't have the vision and the clarity of vision to see something like that through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're totally agree. Right. Yeah. If Sony comes out, so Sony will come out with, a uh, virtual reality device, but Sony as a company, they're going to look at it as a display. They're going to say, okay, you know, it's a new type of display. I mean, I, I imagine this is the way they're going to see it. So they're going to treat it like a display technology. And if that's all it was, they would easily have the advantage, but it's so much more than that. It's, you know, VR is, is, is a full experience of, you know, and you're tapping into the, you know, you're tricking the human perception system. It's, it's, it's really deep stuff. And I just don't think they have the vision to have this kind of holistic approach. You know, they're, they're always, one division is always going to, you know, interfere with another in a company like Sony, and they're just not going to be able to all come together for a single vision of the best VR experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right, Carl. So yeah, so this so November rolls around and and here comes December and December I don't think I could have anticipated what December brought forth to the table. I mean it comes in the form of this, you know, uh, insane amounts of money. Um, I and yeah, that was the seventy five million dollar uh, venture fund uh, story was was probably t- top top you know. Amongst the biggest stories of the year for for Oculus, I would say John Carmack coming in full time and the 75 mil I think defined for me at least the the story of Oculus this year um, because they're segmenting themselves, they're planting the roots to hopefully next year fundamentally change the way we play video games. Um, it's, it's, so what do you guys? What was your opinions when you first heard about the uh, 75 mil? Yeah, I, I think it's, I mean, it's it's great news for VR because it shows, you know, Andreessen Horowitz, here's a serious VC firm that is respected and mm-hmm. that's had a lot of successes in the past putting, a, you know, a real significant chunk of money. I mean, a lot of companies will get, you know, 5 million, 10 million, even 16 million, but not a lot of companies get above 50 million um, in, in such, you know, with in such an unproven market at, at such an early stage. So it puts their valuation at, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but you know, in the billions, I think at least a billion. Yeah. I'm not sure the exact details there, but it's, you know, it's a real um, vote of confidence and you know, the way VC firms work, it's a herd mentality. So they need a couple established um, firms to get in there and invest in a technology before the rest come. So I think this is going to start, uh, you know, a, a whole herd of VCs looking to invest invest in the space, which will be good for the space. I agree. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. I remember we were um, actually it was uh, we were doing our SVVR meetup, and then we found out because uh, you know someone had told us that was like, "Hey, do you see this post that happened during the meetup?" And we're like, "What? Oculus just got seventy five mil." We're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's. Just incredibly, incredibly encouraging to see that, you know, these are very intelligent people. Uh, they are not fools with their money. And to see them put $75 million uh, behind a company that does not have a product yet uh, after a, a demo was given. I mean, that's that's incredibly, incredibly exciting to hear. And that's, you know, one of one more of those, you know, steps toward reassurance as far as. Uh, you know, the, the success of Oculus and the success of VR this time around. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's, 
it's any easier to argue in favor of VR nowadays. I mean, uh, the, the kind of fallback argument is for people to always bring up technologies from 10 to 15 years ago. And, uh, and I was like, well, that was then. We've had a smartphone revolution since then. And uh, we have a company that's got almost $100 million in funding um, without having a product yet. <laughs> so it's, uh, it changes the game, changes the game totally. And uh, yeah, lots of, lots of opportunities going forward. Uh, which is also exciting too. That's that's and that's the thing that's amazing to me because here comes a company, you know, started with John, you know, a nineteen-year-old kid that tries to go from two hundred fifty thousand dollars back in two thousand twelve, and who would have known? Who would have guessed that by the end of two thousand thirteen they would be a hundred more than a hundred million dollars in their in their coffers? Like that's that stuff is the sort of stuff movies are going to be, you know, shown at theaters later on. You know, like, there's going to be... Oh, yeah. Like, the social <laughs> network, there's going to be... It's a great story. Yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, there's going to be movies about this. And so, I it, bring, it brings me great hope to to really hear about this. And, you know, I was... I think one of the coolest things that I was just mo the most excited about, I was reading an article, I think it was either TechCrunch or or the version, not sure, but I, the reporter in the article is writing how Carmack, John Carmack is in there just coding and coding and coding and coding. Like, I guess he's just on these, you know, marathons of, of just coding. And, and uh, that is, that is extremely exciting to me to, to hear that John Carmack is just, is, is going at it. And, and, you know, and all of a sudden they have this, this rift model that they showed to 300 investors, only, only five walked away with minor nausea. And even Brendan Uribe, the president can now go inside virtual reality, which he said he couldn't before. It's, 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 it, it I can't wait to try on this new rift prototype. I, that, because holy moly <laughs> if they're talking about the holy grail virtual reality and they have it already like that's what they were saying in the article uh, i i really can't wait anymore like this the anticipation couldn't get any any worse for me and cs is around the corner do you think they'll be showing anything off this this coming cs yeah i, yeah, I, I certainly hope we see yeah something but uh yeah i'm, I'm not you know not sure you know like it's you know, Oculus has kind of surprised us for every major conference, the E3s and CESs and what they've shown off. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know. Like I've, I've said, I mean, there's been no inklings of it, but I would, I would love to see a, kind of a software surprise. Like, and we have this person on board and they're making fill in the blank. Uh, I think that would be super duper exciting. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I hope that we get some information about the new unit and uh, that they announce something. But uh, uh, who knows, man? I mean, that's – Oculus has a great track record as far as being open with the community and having some real timely announcements and stuff like that, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, and they want to get the most bang for their buck and announce things at CES. So it's a prime time for them to announce something exciting, but who knows what, what it will be. Yeah. It's a big mystery. I'm sure it's going to be something fun. Something exciting is going to come out of CES. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be showing something interesting that, we haven't seen before, whether it's on the show floor or, you know, maybe in the private meeting rooms, but they'll definitely be showing interesting stuff and there'll be a lot of new news around the CES time frame, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Yeah, I, uh, that, uh, speaking of amazing software, we, I almost forgot, you know, Oculus did bring along a former EA, uh, from, uh, EA Partners. He was, he's, he was, a. Uh, uh, like I, I forget his name. I unfortunately can't remember. But but yeah, now they have a uh, David D. Martini. You're the man. That guy. Yeah, there you go. A scholar and a gentleman. VP at EA. So that's exciting because now they have someone with the specific job of coming out with software for VR. And this is one of the themes that we've been talking about this year. Like, all right, well, you're going to have this awesome platform, but. Where's your software? I mean, software is what makes and breaks these these sorts of things. And now they have someone with with years of experience in the industry, and and, and hopefully, yeah, it it looks very promising to see what you know uh, what's gonna come out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very very exciting to see that kind of move made. I mean, just and in, in general they're just doing a lot of hiring that all the positions that are on the jobs page it's just you know that oculus is making moves um and uh like you know like we were talking before about oh now that there's 
kind of a, a product out. And now if Sony or Samsung wants to jump on it, well, I think Oculus is going to be two steps ahead of them because while Sony's just figuring out their headset situation, Oculus is going to be moving on to user input or um, establishing some standard SDK across all headsets or, you know, some other awesome thing uh, that's that's going to keep them ahead of the pack. So, um, yeah, definitely have a, a lot of excitement for what Oculus has in store. Yeah, definitely. Carl, you're on. Cool. Sorry, I'm breaking up a little bit here, but um, yeah, the CES is. I think CES this year it's it's just going to be uh, you know a love fest of VR uh, announcements and you know new products and companies that you know things we haven't seen yet and just you know people will finally get a hands on with some alternatives to the Oculus Rift, which mm-hmm. will be interesting. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot more of this Dorobus Dive cell phone holder type you know, lower cost VR experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm looking forward to trying some of those. Um, you know, I've seen some of those and I haven't been too impressed and I've seen a lot of the homemade variations, which seem similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's it's definitely something that will work in a year or two. You know, it's right now it's a little hit or miss. <laughs> definitely. Uh-huh. And so do you think that these, I mean, I, again, it's it's pure speculation because this could go anywhere in any direction. But these these sort of smartphone sort of devices, do you think they'll make a, a dent uh, in Oculus's pocket, or will they help Oculus's cause? What do you think will be the relationship in the future? I mean, so far it feels like it's competitive, but I don't, I really don't know. There's not enough information yet. I think it'll open more people's eyes to the possibilities of VR. And I think for a while, it's not going to be the best experience. So people will get a pretty good experience with that. And they'll say, hey, there's something to this. This is really cool. I mm-hmm. want to I want to see better. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll help them. It'll be it'll be like a lower cost um, point of entry for new customers. Very true. Very smart, for sure. And so uh-huh. we reached December, and we we're already talking about January. See how we seamlessly transition from talking to from the talking about the past to the future. Before we we keep going talking about the future, let's. Uh, I want to know what you guys is your favorite experiences of this year have been so far. Do you have at least your a, a top three uh, you know standout experiences that you've tried out in VR that are like you know what that that's this is this is gonna go places someday or this is a really cool idea. Um, if you want, if you want some time, I can start off with my own and then to give you time to think, cause I know this is going to be off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so my first three, I would say my, my, my top three, I would say, are um, number one, I would go with, uh, Minecraft. The, the Minecraft mod for, for VR is, and especially because of the dev kits resolution, it just goes hand in hand. Like the, the. The, it's it's really good and the UI especially it was uh, I gotta give it to that team that developed that 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 uh, mod they they put in really good work in there uh, number two I would say is uh, Titans of Space uh, just because it's just such a such a breathtaking experience I mean I I'll never forget the first time I tried tra- Titan Space never and number three I would say favorite VR experience Man, I wish I could say Lunar Flight. I just haven't gotten the controller working yet. I, I need to download the update. Thankfully, Sean Edwards just up, did, did, did his update, so I will try that soon. But So that's an honorable, honorable mention. But I would say number three. I saw that. You're not alone with that problem, too. I had that problem. I'm so happy about that update. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm spending my New Year's inside uh, my, a Lunar Lander. And thanks, Bruce, for posting that video because now I have uh, sort of a tutorial what I'm gonna what I'm supposed to do in there. Um, oh yeah, sweet. <laughs> but, oh, I need to watch that. <laughs> yeah, but then my number three. Was, so awesome. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> number three. I would say is because of the immersiveness, Half Life Two. Just just that immersiveness in there. Like, but but to be frank, to be honest, I can't be inside Half Life Two for more than ten minutes. It's it's just it's just Morgan Freeman. Gordon Freeman is um, it'd be hilarious. Dude, I would love to play that a mod like that. Half Life Two with Morgan Freeman in it. Uh, oh man. Uh, but yeah, Gordon Freeman just runs too fast, man. My brain can't keep up. It's just the jer- the motions are too jerky. Um, and I and I don't have a Razor Hydra to experiment with the other uh, Half Life Two mod. But but that Half Life Two is 
is an amazing site to look at in site VR. Now, now, you know, Carl, Carl, Bruce, whoever wants to take it next. I'll go next. Um, I don't, I, I don't think I have any big surprises here. Um, you know, my favorite demos of the year are, um, you know, Proton Pulse. I mean, that's, you know, one of the first ones that I liked and mm -hmm. it's still to this day, I just, it, it's so simple and easy and fun and I never get sick. Um, and I, I don't know what happened there and, but I hope they can work it out so that they can keep updating that. Cause you know, I had high hopes for the multiplayer, Proton Pulse, and it's just such a cool experience. And yeah, I really hope the Pushy Pixel guys get it, get it uh, back on track. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always show that early on when I'm showing people VR. Another one, uh, just Time Rifters, because that's one of the one of the only first person shooters that I can actually play without getting sick. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like like Chris, like you said, Half Life Two. I, I get really sick in Half Life Two. I mean, it, it's made me feel terrible for like two days sometimes. <laughs> oh my god! You know, it's just it's mm -hmm. uh, it's really you know it's I, it's a great experience for as long as I can take it, but then I can't take it anymore. So mm -hmm. you know, I hope that I hope to be able to do that at some point, but I can't do it right now the way it works. Yeah. Um, but um, something about the way Time Rifters is done, I can run around and shoot and I don't get sick. And uh, yeah, I've been really trying to figure out what, what it is about Time Rifters that can, you know, I can do these same things that I can do in a different game and not get sick. And, you know, a lot of it, I think a lot of it actually just has to do with the, the walking animation and the footprints. You know, you get this synesthesia effect from those footprint sounds, the footstep sounds. It kind of helps your gives your brain a little uh, indication that you're you're actually moving. Um, but yeah, whatever they're doing Absolutely. there, they're doing it right. I, I love that experience. It's a great one. For sure, uh -huh. definitely. Um, oh, and the final one I'll say is um, actually um, another one that really makes me sick. But it just for the the teaser that it gives you is the um, the control alt viewer for Second Life. Being able to go into Second Life, which is, you know, just such a really richly built world that's just massive. You know, you can never see all of the things that are built in Second Life. And, you know, a lot of it's terrible, but a lot of it's amazing. And, you know, it's just that chaos that creates so much amazing content, all user generated. And um, being able to go in there in the Rift is just kind of a mind blowing experience. Um, the, the the lag and the low frame rate and you know some of the architectural problems with Second Life make it less than ideal for VR, but still being able to get a peek of that and the, like what a future metaverse will look like a VR metaverse with tons of avatars running around and building things it's you know that's really an eye opening experience. Yeah, for sure. That that's a good list. That's a very good list. And Time Rifters definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I. You're right. I don't get sick from Time Rifters either. You're right. They're, they're doing something yeah, right. You're right. Huh? I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it right. Keep doing it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> what Definitely. about you, Bruce? Oh, yeah. Um, since I'm uh, making a, uh, a top 20 video, I don't want to give yeah, it away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, I will give you three of my top 20, uh, <laughs> um, given the sheer number of, of demos and, yeah. and games that I've played through. It's just, it's really tough to even pick them. I, mean, I mean, everything changes. I played Time Rifters version 0.5 uh, last night, and that shot much higher on my list. Um, just some of the, some of the changes to the experience I've made there has just made it a top tier experience. It's so good. So Time Rifters is definitely on my list. Uh, it's freaking amazing. Titans of Space is also just uh, a breathtaking, amazing experience, getting that sense of scale. Uh, and also it's informative and educational. Uh, it just shows a lot of the potential of what, uh, VR, uh, can, you know, can bring to education and, uh, what VR can bring to uh, just the the experience of learning in general. Uh, it's really, really very cool. Um, man, I don't, uh, man, there's there's just so many. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, uh, I could I call out dread halls for being so amazingly yeah. immersive and scary, or Minecraft for one of you know, the best multiplayer experience in VR right now. Uh, hands down, it's like amazing. Being on a Metacraft server is just crazy, and uh, Lunar Flight from design standpoint is just—it just has it spot on uh, as far as you know 
making something comfortable and playable uh, in VR, in the Rift in particular. Um, so, yeah, just lots of really amazing quality top tier experiences that are out there. But uh, those are among my favorites for sure. So Very nice. And speaking of Dreadhalls, the uh, the creator, Sergio, Sergio Hidalgo, uh, I got to take a... Uh, I got to I got I got to get a sneak peek at a, at a few of uh, of the things he's working on and and I am uh, anticipating Dread Halls will become even scarier in the future. I don't know if that was possible. Oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> But he's working on some stuff in there. I'm like, dude, is is that going to be legal? Like am I going to be able to go in there? Like that's going to be crazy. Uh, yeah. So pre prepare yourselves. Uh, <laughs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> But <laughs> Yeah. So that thank you. That was uh thank you for your list, guys. That was a, that was a that was very awesome. Now, looking forward into the future, I think that um, VR will touch in industries and sectors of society that you and I can't really anticipate because we're not you know fortune tellers. We're not Nostradamus. We can't predict the future. You know, we could have never we could have never predicted the seventy five mil. But um, you know, do you you know just the top of, the, of your head like a, a you know is there a, a place that you think virtual reality has yet to touch that if it touches like it might it might t change things like things that people aren't thinking about like i for example i i have one but i want to hear you guys this first if you have any crazy predictions of the future where vr might end up well um i i think one thing that is important is going to be an important use for VR is, um, you know, to, tied in with 3D printing and 3D printing is really coming out. Um, and, oh, you know, yeah. that makes makes it so you can print anything in the world that you can think of, but you have to actually make it first and VR can make that a lot easier. So I think that's going to be a big use of VR. Um, also, um, and we mentioned this a number of times, but just, yeah, movie watching. I mean, there's just, you know, you can really emulate being in front of this massive screen, you know, wherever you are. And I think that's going to be probably one of the biggest uses of VR is as a personal uh, movie device. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely on board with that. Um, yeah, I think the, the impact on VR on certain types of productivity, like uh, AutoCAD, um, 3D modeling, um, art-wise, uh, uh, there's something to be said when you have a sense of, of, of scale uh, and spatial recognition because uh, our architectural industry, um, like John Bouchot has, has, has said, like it totally changes his workflow when he's able to design something and then stand in it uh, and get a sense of the scale rather than look at a, 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 a 3D projection on a 2D screen. Uh, it totally changes the way he does his work. Uh, and that's only with a dev kit. I mean, imagine what he's going to have with a consumer product that he'll be able to show, you know, clients and things like that. So I, I think uh, productivity is going to see a major impact from virtual reality. Just, you know, anything that has to do with 3D modeling is going to see a huge, uh, a huge impact on workflow um, for sure. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Yeah, uh, I would I would like to say like um, kind of like uh, education wise, I, I think it could be very very interesting to see how that's going to take off or how that will be implemented. Um, it, it's so much more engaging, uh, you know, to uh, to go and be uh, in a place to have a sense of presence. Mm -hmm. um, rather than watch a film, to be in the film, to be at the battle, or to witness a situation as if you're there, mm -hmm. um, that has a much greater impact and uh, sparks much more interest uh, as as far as that goes uh, for art or history um, or you know any any number of subjects, uh, science in particular. That definitely brings a lot of wonder. Um, so definitely looking forward to see what VR brings to that space as well. I think you're right. I think VR is on the is, is is I think it has the potential to change education forever. I, I really think so. I, and but but the problem is and the thing that I'm having uh, difficulty thinking about is like who who is gonna bring this to the forefront? Like who is? I mean, we know Oculus is is doing you know is bringing VR itself to the forefront through gaming, but like you know education, I don't. I don't see, I don't see a, a big legitimate party stepping up and saying, uh, "Hey, 
this is this is gonna be the future of education. Perhaps, perhaps the rift has yet to touch that person. Um, it's some. It's, you're out there. If you're not listening to this, but you, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna change education forever if you're out there. Um, because I think that'll come out of the universities organically. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I, you know, I don't want to harp on Second Life, but I'll bring it up again because there is a lot of educational use, or at least there were um, a few years back in Second Life. A lot of universities were experimenting with teaching classes in Second Life. So I think that there's this sense that education and virtual spaces, you know, can, you know, can be tied together to create something new and interesting. So the same people that did that kind of thing will now be, you know, using the, the Oculus Rift and the other VR um, systems to, you know, experiment with that and come up with things and figure out what works and what doesn't work. So I think that'll actually just come out of universities themselves. For sure. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, education, uh, like public education moves slow, but there is a movement in America right now about innovation education. Uh, and there's there's a lot of activity around that, uh, really, you know, changing this education model that we have that that's based on getting a person to know these certain facts and then have them take a factory job, you know, which is based on like what late, late 1800s model. Um, and our education system, it, it needs to change. And it's, uh, you know, the, most people agree and those, uh, and those people are at higher levels in, in administration now are agreeing as well. They're trying new things and experimenting with new ways to teach kids, um, there's a lot of private schools and charter schools that are trying trying very very different things like, you know, having no class structure or focusing the entire curriculum of the year around building a bridge. So in math class they learn the equations about bridge building. Uh, in physics they build the bridge. In history they learn about the history of bridges. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so there's all kinds of interesting things going on in the educational space that aren't highly advertised right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, having kids code and do 3D modeling and do more stuff with computers uh, is definitely happening in private schools uh, across the country and across the world. Yeah. Um, you know, those those kids are learning to use Photoshop and learning to edit video and everything uh, in you know fifth or sixth grade. Uh, so um, it is uh, it is it is coming. It's it's going to start from the private sector and and from uh, universities and so forth. But uh, it eventually will will. Uh, be ubiquitous, I believe. You know, you speak about education, and I think, and, and here's this, here's an idea. I, I think it's a crazy idea. It might be a bad idea, but here it goes anyway. <laughs> um, what about virtual reality and prisons? Because I think that yes, VR has is such a, it has such potential to change education and to educate us and educate us in a more tailored, uh, more individualized way and then i think about what about yeah what about prisons what about people who are who need to be re-educated am i am i even think am i crazy am i thinking about am i thinking about huh i don't know am i crazy guys because <laughs> i'm like we maybe maybe we could use virtual reality with in the prison system to like educate so people or you know give, if give you're them saying we we lock a vr headset to a prisoner's head and re-educate them <laughs> yeah i basically <laughs> just said that oh my god that is the premise for a sci-fi movie if i've ever heard one yeah. um, <laughs> let's do it nice all right let's do it <laughs> all right let's go well i think the potential there is uh not just education but therapy um yeah i was just sent like a, a program uh, uh, called uh, Anxiety Management VR, uh, where there's a there's a firm that's working on, uh, you know, some of you know phobias and and triggers for anxiety, like you know narrow hallways and uh, you know claustrophobia, being locked in closet, or you know fear of spiders or insects or fear of heights, uh, things like that. And they have all these experiences that are tailored for a person with those anxiety issues. Um, and coupled with a professional that's coaching that person or talking that person through that experience, uh, I believe it could be very effective. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the rift was convincing enough that, uh, although I don't get anxiety from most of those triggers, uh, definitely for the heights one, I, I had to kind of calm myself down and, and, uh, kind of realize, uh, you know, what, what was going on. Um, 
but yeah, the potential for therapy is very powerful, and yeah. I, I would love to see a move in this country as far as prison systems more toward therapy and rehabilitation and less toward punitive lock this person up and forget about them type deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would, that would be great. I I think the potential for therapy for people and, and to help them, uh, face their own fears and, and, and issues and come to grips with them, uh, in a safe space, uh, is a very powerful thing. Yeah. The, and the potential's there, which is, which is, which is, which you get, which gives me hope for sure. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Bruce, I know you're, you're, you're starting to run out of time. Good, sir. Uh, let's just quickly finish off the, the show. I'd love to go on for hours and hours, but I understand you have uh, scheduling commitments. Let's just finish off with what are you most excited? What are you guys most excited about, uh, for 2014? You know, I mean, this is virtual reality, but anything can happen. I mean, yeah. What, what's in your mind? Most excited for 2014, man. Uh, I I gotta say, man, I'm I'm very much looking forward to the actual release of of the rift. Yeah. Uh, I'm you know to see that happen this year and to see what's going to happen and how successful it is. And uh, I, you know, I'm just excited to kind of see that unfold and and be a part of it and and see where how much a part of it I am <laughs> um you know to see what uh, what kind of impact I'll be able to have on the community uh and uh and beyond and and uh so I'm I'm for sure looking forward to that I, I think that's uh that's kind of everything's building up to that consumer release you know where it's just going to be available to everyone and to you know to see those experiences unfold uh across the world uh, as kind of a, a new a new dawn of technology, a shift in technology is, is going to happen, I believe. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that's right on. I mean, twenty fourteen is this is the year that VR, you know, hits, you know, at least t- starts to touch on the mainstream. Um, it, it may take a year or two for it to go really big, but this is, you know, this is the year it really all starts. You know, with the release of the consumer model, and you know. All the other interesting, you know, Oculus Rift competitors that are popping up. I mean, it, it's just, yeah, this is a really exciting year because there's just so much is all coming together, and yeah, I, I could not be more excited for all the stuff that I expect to happen this year. And you know, I, I, I agree, VR is one of these things that's it's gonna, you know, it's gonna change everything. It's gonna change, you know, technology and computers and education and all the things we talked about. It's, it's, you know, this is just. Uh, you know, this is a really important um, milestone and, and marker. You know, there's there was life before VR and life after VR, and you know, this is like we're right at that point where this where that happens and that shift happens. So it's going to be interesting ride, that's for sure. Thank you, uh-huh. Carl, for those <laughs> awesome words, and and Bruce, you guys just have given me shivers uh, thinking about these things. <laughs> like, yeah, we're right in the midst of the age of information, and we are witnessing the birth of, of virtual reality. How exciting could that be? It's like science fiction, guys. <laughs> it is. Yeah. All the things I've been dreaming dreaming about since a kid finally <laughs> becoming uh, becoming real right before our eyes. Absolutely. And we're right Absolutely. in the middle of it, which is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, just trying to think of it, you know, it's like, oh, that's amazing. So, again, it was a, a pleasure to share this this moment with you scholars and gentlemen of virtual reality. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah, I can't wait to for 2014. And for all those listeners out there, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have a happy new year. Um, Feliz Navidad. Sorry, that's not, sorry, that was Christmas. Uh, uh Feliz Año. <laughs> Fel- <laughs> Let's do this one more time. I'm not going to edit that. Uh, uh Feliz, <laughs> Feliz Año Nuevo, Shin and Kuala, and, uh, Merry Christmas. Ah, I did it again. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This was Enter VR. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.